I have always been a multitasker. In fourth grade, I was the writer, the editor, the illustrator, and the publisher of Mays Magazine, which, if you can't guess, was about mazes. <laughs> I distribute it to my entire class. So this project, ping-ponging, continued into my adulthood. I wrote poems while filling out shipping labels as a fashion intern. I HTML coded this website about this world my sister and I made up as kids, about square-headed creatures, while entering in IPO deals during that like really suspicious year on Wall Street. Um, I did a lot of freelancing while I was a journalist. I always like to have a lot of things going on at once. I like my mind to be super, super busy. Or so I thought. Um, 2011 was one of the best years of my life. I had a book series, hit a coveted position on the New York Times bestseller list. The kind of position in which the publisher sends you a paperweight the size of your head and you don't know what to do with it. Um, I went to LA and watched as these four beautiful, possibly beautiful women uh, portrayed my characters that my strange brain had made up for a TV show. Um, I was pregnant with my first child too. And I was also working about five book projects. I was designing the nursery all by myself. I had knitted my kid at least 17 woolen items, which was perfect for a child born in August. Um, I was the multitasking queen. Uh, in August, I gave birth to a baby boy in a delivery so swift the, and easy, the nurses thought this was like my fourth or fifth child. They even brought in other nurses to show me off. You'd have thought I had given birth on the subway astride a horse. Uh, and in the heady moments postpartum, I felt like I was just rocking it. I was like, I got this down. I can do anything. I'm the queen of the world. And then it all fell apart. Um, having a baby, if you haven't, if you don't have a baby, it's really hard. Um, there is suddenly this thing in your arms, you have no clue what to do with it. You feel guilty if you, the mother, have made it cry. You feel bad that if its head is still cone-shaped. Um, you feel bad that your pants don't fit. You feel riddled with guilt when you put the baby on the floor in a house with a big dog and accidentally fall asleep on the floor while watching Jersey Shore. <laughs> All of a sudden, I was no longer crushing life. How was I going to get all of these books done with this little person? How was I going to keep this little person alive? Where had my perfect, ordered, capable world gone? Um, the other awful thing that happened right around that time is that my marriage fell apart. It had been coming for a while, building probably before the kid was a little gummy bear on the sonogram screen. Um, but when it happened, it was like a dam breaking. And suddenly there was no getting away from the deluge. And on Christmas Eve, perfect day to do it, I did the unthinkable. I took the baby, I took the big dog, and I left. Um, I moved across the state to my parents' house, because that's, of course, where you want to go. Uh, <laughs> I had some clothes, I had some baby things, I had some Christmas presents, I had my desktop computer because I had about three books to finish in what felt like six days. Uh, during this time, my brain multitasked, but not in a good way. At 3 a.m., my eyes would pop open and the lists would start. The composing of eloquent arguments, the tally of furniture my husband would keep and what I would take, the conversations we'd had and what I should have said, and of course, all the mistakes I was making as a mom because I was making a million of them. I had no idea how I was going to sustain this level of non-functioning while raising a baby and writing a shitload of books. Can I say that? Well, yeah. I just did. All right. I needed to solve this. I needed to go back to the self where I did everything well. I needed to go back to the Maze Magazine, Sarah. And then the internet presented me with a breakthrough. Hey, my mother said one day while I was lying in bed, exhausted but not able to sleep, remember that thing you have with people's voices? Yes, I said, I did have a thing with people's voices. A certain voice would put me into this strange, oozy state of catatonia. Someone seeing it, me in it once remarked th that it seemed as though I was on heroin. <laughs> Finding the particular voice that did this to me was unpredictable, though. Uh, it might be the tawny, crackling vocal cords of an old, uh, my old dental hygienist. Um, <laughs> who I didn't make appointments with uh, because I needed my teeth clean, but I just like to hear her talk and talk and talk about her adolescent son. Um, it, it might be an older lady giving a speech at a planetarium. <laughs> or it might be the family friend who would park herself at our kitchen table and drone on for hours and hours about topics like what sort of school supplies were on sale at Target and the many and exciting sense of Ben Gay. 
<laughs> While my parents were t- pulling their hair out, trying to get this woman to leave, I sat at the kitchen table in a state of near bliss. <laughs> and my mother said, well, it's a thing. Other people have it besides you. There's a whole culture of it on the internet. And it is called ASMR, Autonomic Sensory Meridian Response. It was written up in O. Uh, (laughs) Dr. Oz, you know, This American Life. It works like this. Some lucky people listen to voices, especially whispering. And something happens in their brain to create pleasant but strange tingles, not unlike an orgasm. Narcissist that I am, I was kind of bummed that like somebody else had my special skill. <laughs> On the other hand, it was cool to know that there, this was an actual brain process at work because if other people were experiencing ASMR, it meant there was probably a community of us and it was a community that I really needed. So of course I checked out the videos on YouTube and I was like, where have you people been all my life? There they were, all my favorite voices all in one spot. They were women, t- typically, they still are, they're still on there, doing better than ever. Uh, speaking in hypnotic voices or low tones, they go through their jewelry boxes. They sort nail polish. They do a show and tell of everything they bought at the grocery store. I listened to a woman with a Midwestern accent list everything she got at her wedding shower. Not because I really cared, but because there was something about her voice that had me transfixed. A lot of people use ASMR to sleep, but I just did it to self-soothe the grind of thoughts cycling in my head. I didn't even use it at bedtime. I did listen to it midday, like at noon, you know, 2.30, just when I needed a break. And it worked. It felt like the noise canceling headphones from my crisis. I was constantly hyper, I was in this constantly hyper aroused state, fantasizing about a time when, my, when things were gonna be easier for me, like my relationship settling, the divorce final, all these books finished, my kid older and more manageable. And if there was anyone not living in the now, it was definitely me. Um, I'm not saying that watching ASMR videos at noon is a valid replacement for meditation or Zen retreats, but lying in a dark room, listening as a person thumbed through a magazine and commented on the lipstick ads did bring me (laughs) mindfulness. I wasn't running towards something. I was running. I wasn't running from something. I was just there lying in bed. It was a welcome silence for me. Well, a silence of whispering. Um, I often tell my kids, because now I have to two kids, my life has moved on, Um, that it must be hard for them. It must be so hard to have to put on shoes when they don't want to, or eat things they don't want to eat, or sit still to get a haircut. But being an adult is hard too. As a woman, or a mom, or maybe just me, the need to handle is forced onto us in the same way shoes are forced onto that little kid. Um, We want to multitask with the need to hold it all in our hands at once. We need to crush every goal in our path. You know, and it's always, it's always there. My life did improve from those days, frantic days in my parents' guest room, but it doesn't mean my mind has calmed down any, nor have I dropped my responsibilities. But that's the beauty of these ASMR videos. There's a way I can stop juggling for a moment. There is a way I can fight my need, my need to always do more and be better and be best. I'm just gonna sit here, zone out, and listen as a woman lint rolls her clothes. And this is where I go, even for a few minutes, and I'm not gonna feel bad about it. I will stop thinking, I will stop trying to handle it all, and I will just listen.